The City of Santa Barbara Wastewater Division is continually working to extend your life expectancy. That's right. In fact, recent studies have shown that wastewater treatment has been more effective in extending life expectancy than all other medical breakthroughs combined. Wastewater treatment is very, very important because that's what protects our receiving water quality. Uh, just as in the collection system, it's so critical that we keep our sewage within the pipes and the pump stations to ensure that raw sewage does not go into the environment. At the wastewater treatment plant, we need to ensure that we get all the pollutant materials that are required by our state and federal permits out of the wastewater before we discharge it into the Pacific Ocean or reuse it as recycled water uh, for, our, for our recreational purposes. Uh, that's what keeps our environment clean. Without it, we would be polluting our freshwater streams and we would be polluting our ocean environment to an extent that it would not be safe to enter those waters. Wastewater treatment in Santa Barbara began in 1870 and has been enhanced over the years to meet ever-increasing water quality standards. The city has a wastewater treatment plant located on Yananali Street that receives all of the water from indoor water use. So sinks, showers, toilets flow there through a system of underground pipes primarily located under streets. That treatment plant treats the water to meet uh, federal and state water quality requirements that are protective of public health and the environment. The wastewater collection system uh, is uh, fairly extensive. Uh, it's approximately 265 miles of pipe, of which half of the system is six inch diameter vitrified clay pipe. And it's been put in over the last century. And we have some that's fairly recent, and the newest pipe that's in our system is made out of uh, plastic. We also have a number of sewage pump stations or lift stations that lift the sewage up from low points and then put them back into the gravity sewer system so that all the sewage can reach its final destination here at the City of Santa Barbara's El Estero Wastewater Treatment Plant. El Estero processes about 8 million gallons of wastewater a day. The total time it takes for wastewater to be processed is about 8 hours. Currently, 1 million gallons a day is reclaimed water. That is, it's taken secondary effluent and it's treated to an even higher standard so that it can be reused in the community, uh, either at parks or golf courses, uh, largely for recreational purposes. And so approximately 7 million gallons per day is disposed of in the Pacific Ocean. After it's gone through all of its treatment processes, the uh, secondary effluent is chlorinated and then uh, disinfected and then after that the um, chlorine residuals are made harmless before that ocean receiving water gets this remaining seven million gallons per day. In order for the operation to run smoothly, great effort is put into maintaining the wastewater system. Well maintaining a plant in, requires substantial effort in terms of making sure it's operating effectively but also making sure that the equipment used doesn't degrade to a point where it's no longer useful. So have an active um, maintenance program and replacement program to make sure that everything's working as it should. And that same approach extends out into the community, into our collection system and pump stations, where we have to actively maintain and operate that part of the treatment plant as well by cleaning our sewer systems and making sure that pump stations used to lift wastewater from low areas up to high areas are properly maintained so that they are working at all times. Recently, the division has made a number of improvements to the wastewater system. We've really improved our focus on basic operations and maintenance of the collection system and we've seen dramatic results. And I think the primary credit for those improvements are just increased attention to cleaning and just making sure that we're out there every day cleaning as much pipe as we can. This is an example of our routine preventive maintenance cleaning where the sewer vector truck pulls up to the next downstream manhole location. This is a, a location identified on their work order. So it's, what they're doing now is they'll basically set up traffic control, they'll open the manhole up, align the vehicle up so that the hose is over the center of the manhole, conduct operating procedures where they basically insert this high, high pressure cleaning hose against the flow upstream to the next manhole condition. They trap and quantify and measure the, the debris that they find, basically. Then they write down their condition findings. Then they'll move on to their next established work order location. 
One area targeted for improvement has been spills. Well, spills can happen from a variety of causes. Uh, a lot of our spill history has been related to uh, maintenance issues, and our primary cause of spills has been roots. Uh, there can also be other factors, including debris and grease. Uh, there also are, every now and then, we have contractor-related uh, structural problems where a contractor will break a pipe. Um, but in summary, uh, our recent spill history has proven to be mostly maintenance-related. In the last year and a half, we've, we've really redoubled our efforts to make a much better program of cleaning our sewer mains. And thanks to the improvements made to the system, there's been a decrease in the number of spills in the last year. In 2009, we had 42 uh, sanitary sewer overflow events in Santa Barbara. Uh, this year, we're very proud to say that we've only had five uh, through uh, September to date, and that they've been very small in nature, and that of those five events, there's only been 40 gallons of sewage that has reached the environment. That is, that we weren't able to recover and put back into the sewer system. So our staff is doing a remarkable job. We're very proud of them, and we're basically uh, gonna have even better performance in the future uh, due to our ongoing programs to reduce spills. Programs aren't the only way to reduce spills. You too can help improve the wastewater system. It's very, very important also for us as residents to ensure that we don't deposit grease materials into the sewer system through our sewer laterals. And so that means taking simple efforts when we cook uh, to not discharge greasy water or greasy materials into the kitchen sink, but rather to wipe our utensils and wipe our pots and pans first and dispose of that grease-laden material into the trash before we clean our pots and pans. I know it sounds simple, but uh, we can all do ourselves a huge favor uh, by keeping fog materials, grease, out of our collection system. I think the public can help in maintenance and operation of the collection system by not putting fats, oils, and grease down the sewer system and not putting other things that shouldn't go down there. Hazardous materials or really any solid objects don't belong in a wastewater collection system and should be disposed of appropriately. Okay. Great.